my view, why moats matter is that they increase business value. They lengthen the period where a company can reinvest capital at a high incremental rate of return. You know, very simply, you can just for a longer period of time, it takes longer for returns on capital to decline down to cost of capital. And so the company can reinvest at an incrementally positive rate of return for a longer period of time. Moats also reduce business risk because they insulate the business from competition and exogenous shocks. And this is really important in the context of a concentrated portfolio, because if you have, if your average position is seven or eight and a big position is 12% versus two or 3%, those unexpected shocks can really hurt you. Uh, and so having the ability to have the business insulated from competition and unexpected shocks, again, you know, not completely insulated, but to have that risk reduced is very beneficial. And that's one reason why we focus on moats and why I think moats, uh, a focus on moats is especially uh, useful in a concentrated portfolio. Finally, moats can be inefficiently priced because a go forward evaluation of competitive advantage requires qualitative analysis. Um, you can't just click on Bloomberg and screen for switching costs. It doesn't work that way. You got to get out there and talk to people. And so because of that, because it requires real work from the analyst, well, uh, a lot of the investment community doesn't do the work. And so if you do, you have the opportunity to develop a variant perception. So that's another reason why I think understanding moats and competitive advantage can be advantageous to the investor. And why reinvestment matters is that it maximizes the value of competitive advantage. It lowers the risk of value destructive capital allocation. And we'll give a couple quick examples to help, help illustrate this a little bit. So company A, 20% returns on capital, pretty good, but you know maybe its end market isn't growing very much. And so it can only reinvest 30% of its cash flow. It only has the ability to reinvest 30% of its cash flow because you know it's selling candy, it's selling beer. You know, the market's only growing five or 6% a year. So 70% of its cash flow is being used for dividends, buybacks, and MA. Now, let's take a step back. Only a third of cash flow is actually earning that, you know. 20% rate of return that got you really excited about the business in the first place, assuming incremental return on capital, you know, equals cost of capital, of course. We also have the potential for value destruction because most repurchases, as we know, tend to be at overpriced levels. You have a, a small number of managers, uh, CEOs who do this well, but the vast majority of companies deploy more capital to reinvest when the markets are hot. And of course, we all know the track record of M&A, generally pretty poor. Again, some companies who focus on it do it really, really well, but most companies, frankly, don't. And of course, the income that's paid out to me, the investor, has to be redeployed in a public equity market. It might be taxed, and so then we have tax leakage, but then I've got to go out and compete with a whole bunch of other smart guys, some of, and women, some of whom you know, belong to CFA Society of India or other CFA societies, and redeploy that capital. And that's a much less efficient way of using that capital that the business is generating than just reinvesting it back in. So let's look at company B. Same return on capital, 20%, return on incremental capital. It reinvests 70% of its cash flow, right? The market is growing at a reasonably fast pace so that it's able, to, it has the capacity to continue reinvesting. The most logical thing to do with that capital is to reinvest. And so the bulk of the cash flow actually earns that 20% return on capital that got you excited about the business in the first place. And you have lower capital allocation risk because there's really one, two, well, this is two figures, because there's one choice, which is to reinvest the capital, right? Plow it back into this wonderful business that's earning 20% returns on capital. And critically, the return on that reinvestment is higher than what's typically achievable in public equity markets. Just take a step back and think about it. The set of companies with sustainable returns on capital above 20% is way larger than the set of equity managers, you know, Yahoo's like me, with long-term net returns above 20%. And if that's the case, then the most logical thing to do is to find the businesses that can keep reinvesting because the capital is going to compound at a higher rate than if they give it back to you and you've got to do something with it in a highly competitive equity market.